In this video, we'll be working with the chart web part, which allows you to graphically visualize numeric data from sources such as an Excel spreadsheet or a SharePoint list. This feature is part of SharePoint Server Enterprise Services. In this demonstration, I will add a chart to the sales site to graphically display data coming from an Excel spreadsheet. I'll open the Excel file that I'll be using in this demonstration. This contains sales data for several office locations for the first quarter. On the sales web page, I would like to display the quarter end totals for each of the office locations. In one of the steps to make the connection, I will need to reference this range of cells. So an easy way to do that is to just give that range a name. So I'll select the range, click up in the name box, and type in a name, quarter sales. and then press enter. So I'll save the Excel file here and close it. Next I'll need to upload that Excel file to the sales site. I will upload it to the shared documents library. And here's the file I want to upload under sales. Before I leave the library, I know I will need the URL address to the workbook for setting up the chart web part. I'll open a second browser tab so I can easily come back to copy the URL. And then I'll return to the sales page. And now I'll insert the chart web part here. So I'll go to the page tab and select edit. Then I'll click the insert tab. I'll place my cursor below the title where I want the web part placed and then I'll click on web part. This web part is found in the business data category and then over in the list of web parts here's the chart web part. And then I'll click add. The web part is added with the sample chart displayed. There are two links above the chart for configuring and formatting the chart, data and appearance, and advanced properties. We start with data and appearance to identify the data we want represented by the chart. I'll choose OK to save, and then I'll choose Connect Chart to Data. There are four steps to this data connection wizard as outlined over here on the left. It will always highlight whichever step you are currently on. And on the first step, I choose the data source, and here are the four options I have. You can connect to another web part that displays the data to be charted connect to a list containing data to chart, connect to business data catalog, or connect to data in Excel workbook using Excel services, which is the source for our demonstration. This lets you connect to spreadsheet data stored in a SharePoint document library. Now that it's selected, I'll click Next to go to Step 2. Step 2 is connect to the data from Excel services. The Excel web service URL will already be filled in. So next I need to fill in the Excel workbook path. And that's the path to the document library containing the file. So I'll go to the other tab where the shared document library is open and copy the portion of the address that I need to reference this file. And I want the entire address up to the shared documents library. Nothing after that. So I'll select that part of the address then right click and copy. And then I'll return to the tab where I left off, go to the Excel work path box, right click and paste. Now I just need to add the workbook file name to the end of the path, which I do by adding another forward slash and the file name. And then in the range name field, I'll enter the name of the range in the worksheet containing the data, which I named quarter sales. And the first row of my data does contain column names, so I will leave that checked. Then I'll click the next button to continue to the third step. In this step, a preview of the data from the spreadsheet displays based on the information I supplied. Everything looks good, so I'll click on Next to continue. In this last step, I choose what data I want displayed on the chart, what labels or categories should go on the x-axis, and what values for those categories should be charted against the y-axis. The labels on the x-axis will be the location names, 
so for the X field choice I will leave that out location. The values I want represented in the chart are the total sales numbers for quarter one. So I'll click the drop down and choose quarter one totals. There are other advanced charting options and properties available here that we won't get into in this video. So I'll click finish and I'm returned back to my sales page with the chart. And on the x-axis here are the locations it used for the labels and each bar represents the quarter end sales numbers. You also have quite a few options for changing the chart look and feel. You do that by clicking on data and appearance and then go to customize your chart. This shows you the currently selected chart type, the default. Click on standard chart types. You have a list of a lot of different chart types here. As you choose the different chart categories, to the right it shows you the different variations. You also have 2D and 3D options with that. In the next step, you can choose the color theme, transparency, the actual chart width and height. I go to the next step. And here you see across the top you have tabs for adding a title and a legend to the chart. Change the axis grid lines. You have the x-axis settings, the y-axis settings, data labels and markers. And then after you make your selections, of course, you choose finish. And I'll just choose cancel. More granular chart options can be found under advanced properties. And here you can change the formatting of all the various little elements of the chart, such as border lines, border image, color, line styles, skin, and so on. And I'll just cancel from here. These links for configuring and formatting the chart will not be visible to users who have read-only permission to this web page. So in this demonstration, you were introduced to inserting and configuring the chart web part on a web page to represent data from a data source such as an Excel spreadsheet.